Ya, ya, sí, es tuyo.
um, we will read the verse translation and then we'll go over the meanings of some of the words so that we uh, learn the meanings of these words and the pastime of you know the entire Damodar Lila comes to our heart, to our mind when we recite this prayer. So I will start the first verse. Namamishwaram Sachi Gananda Rupam Lasar Kundalam Gokule Bhajamanam Yashoda Piyoyo embodiment of eternal existence, knowledge and bliss, whose shark-shaped earrings are swinging to and fro, who is beautifully shining in the divine realm of Gokula, who, due to the offense of breaking the pot of yogurt that his mother was turning into butter, and then stealing the butter that was kept hanging from a swing, is quickly running from the wooden grinding mortar in fear of Mother Yashoda but who has been caught from behind by her who ran after him with greater speed. To that Supreme Lord, Sri Damodar, I offer my humble obeisances. So Satyavit Muni is starting this prayer by saying, Namami, I bow down. Hmm? To Ishwaram, who is the Supreme Controller, he is such an Ananda Rupa, means his body is composed of eternity, he is full of eternity, bliss and knowledge. Lasat Kundalam, his earrings are swinging to and fro as he is running. Gokule Brajmanam, he is performing these enchanting pastimes in the divine realm of Gokul. Yashoda Bhayo Lokata Dhavamanam, with the bhaya of fear of Mother Yashoda, Krishna is running from the water. Param Totro Dhrute Gopya. So this Gopi, Yashoda, she is running after Krishna and she has caught Krishna from behind. So Krishna, um, when mother was churning the yogurt and she was doing the Sankirtan, Harinam Sankirtan, because her body, uh, with her bangles, it was a sound of kartals, with the mortar and the churning rod was sound of Mridanga and she, with her tongue she was singing songs of Krishna. So she was doing all of this big Sankirtan and Krishna was three years old. He was sleeping in the room and he got up by the mother Sankirtan and he came out. And he you know, asked mother to feed him and we know that how mother was feeding Krishna the milk, her breast milk, but then you know, the, in the kitchen the milk that was on the stove it started to boil over because the milk was thinking if Krishna becomes so satisfied with just drinking mother's milk, then who will drink me? Uh, my life is useless. Let me commit suicide by falling into the fire. That's what the boiling milk is thinking. And the mother, when she, um, she smells that this boil, milk is boiling or she hears the sound of the milk boiling over, she runs into the kitchen, keeps Krishna down. And Krishna becomes angry. And when Krishna becomes angry, he throws a a pestle stone on the butter pot that mother was churning and the pot breaks and Krishna runs, leaving his butter footprints behind. So then mother comes and then she understands this naughty act is done by Krishna and she, you know, she's running after Krishna. So like that, that's the, the brief, uh, you know, the pastime. So here Krishna is running. So um, Satyavat Muni is starting by paying obeisances to Krishna. He's in the mood of awe and reverence. Namaha, when we pay obeisances to Krishna, we should understand what it means. It means, Krishna, I am giving my body, my mind, my, my, my words to you. I am doing Atman Vedan, full surrender. Krishna, Namami means not me, Krishna, you. Everything for you, nothing for me. That's what uh, Namami means. And we should bow down to Krishna. Raghunath Das Goswami, one of our Acharyas, he had a vow to bow down to Krishna a thousand times a day. And to the Vaishnavas, he would bow down 2,000 times a day. And his vow was like lines drawn on the stone. There is so much significance to bow down to the Lord. The last verse of Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nam Sankirtana Yasya Sarva Papa Nashanam Pranamo Dukha Shamanas Tam Namami Harim Param. This verse is saying that doing Harinam Sankirtan for, of Krishna, it destroys all <coughs> sinful reactions. And bind down before the Lord removes all kind of sufferings, material sufferings. 
So we should bow down to Krishna as, a, as much as we can. Krishna also repeats this in Bhagavad Gita. He says twice, Man mana bhav mad bhakto mad yaji maam namaskuru maam evesha se yukta vayavam atmananam mat parayana. So Krishna is saying that you um, become my devotee. You engage your mind in thinking of me. You pay obeisances to me. You worship me. And doing this, you will come back to me. So Krishna repeats this twice. So we should bow down to the Lord. And um, Satyabrat Muni is saying that he is Ishwara. He is a supreme personality of Godhead. But um, you know, you see Krishna, he is running in fear of Mother Yashoda. He is crying. He has tears in his eyes. He is being chastised by the mother. He is behaving like an ordinary child. But Satyabrat Muni is saying, don't be misled. He is still the supreme personality of Godhead. Don't minimize his position. Hmm? Krishna has chosen to become ordinary because he is conquered by the love of his devotees. Hmm? Someone who is so great, who is a supreme controller, the entire universe is running under his control. Maya Dakshina Prakriti, Krishna says, Suvete Sacharacha. That supreme lord is running in fear of Mother Yashoda. He is crying, shedding tears. Now, when someone who is so great performs some ordinary acts, like, you know, if the president of a country, um, he sweeps the road, you know, people would think, oh, such a, amazing, you know, he's, they would appreciate him so much, oh, he's such a great person and he's doing such a, you know, um, very menial task like that. So we can see Krishna is so great, he's a supreme controller, but he's behaving like an ordinary child. Why? Because he's conquered by the love of his mother. Hmm? Krishna says in Bhagavad, Bhagavatam, he says, Aham Bhakta Paradino, He Shvatantra Ivadri, Sadhu Bir Grasta Rebriya, Bhakta Yen Bhakta Janapriya. That I, I become subordinate to my devotees. I am controlled by my devotees. My devotees always stay within my heart and I stay in the heart of my devotees. Like that. So many examples are there in our scriptures when Krishna has become conquered over by the love of his devotees that he has become subordinate, a servant of his devotee. Like, you know, we can see in the case of the Pandavas, uh, for Arjun, Krishna became the chariot driver, hmm? like a servant following the orders of Arjuna. Uh, for Sudama, the friend of Krishna, Krishna was engaged in washing his feet. Hmm? Nanda Baba says, Krishna, bring me my chappas, my shoes. And Krishna runs and gets his shoes on, on his head. Krishna gets the shoes of his father. And um, the gopis say to Krishna, Krishna, I'll give you a small laddu, half laddu, you dance for us. And Krishna immediately gets up and he starts dancing. Draupadi, she cries out to Krishna, Krishna, please come. And Krishna is busy in Dwarka somewhere, but listening to the, the cries of his devotee, at once he comes and becomes the sari and Draupadi. Vidurani, when Krishna comes to Vidura's place, uh, Vidurani, she doesn't have anything to you know offer to Krishna. She only sees, oh, there are some bananas. And she becomes so bewildered seeing the beauty of Krishna that uh, Vidurani, she offers, you know, she's peeling the bananas and she's throwing away the banana pulp and giving Krishna the banana peel. And Krishna happily eats the banana peel. How many of us have eaten banana peel? Can we eat banana peel? No. And Krishna ate banana peel because it was given with love by his devotee. So many examples are there how when Krishna gets conquered by the love of his devotees. Hmm? There is no one equal to Krishna, no one greater than Krishna. We say, Asam Uddhava. Aishwarya sa samagrasya, virya sa yashashashya, jnana velagya sheva sanam bhagavan tamgana. Right? There are six opulences. There is no one greater to Krishna in terms of his strength, his fame, his wealth, his beauty, his knowledge, renunciation. But you know, Krishna has become, you know, he has become servant of his devotee. And Krishna is such an Ananda Rupam, he is full of bliss, eternity and knowledge. But here we see Krishna is crying and he is running in fear. It means Krishna has forgotten that he is the Supreme Lord. The love of his devotees conquers him so much that he forgets that he is the Supreme Lord. Lasat Kundalam, why are the earrings specifically mentioned in this Damodar Ashtakam? Because Satyavat Muni is seeing that how these earrings are uh, kissing the cheeks of Krishna. Hmm? And um, later on, he would say that, oh, this uh, gopi, uh, one gopi is also kissing Krishna. And he refers to gopi, he is ambiguous who that gopi is. And one of the acharyas commented, it could be Yashoda Rani or it could be Radha Rani, who is 
uh, kissing Krishna. So Satyavat Muni focuses on that and he says that, oh, these earrings get to kiss Krishna. I am not able to kiss Krishna. So like that, he has that feelings. And these earrings, um, it says that, um, you know, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that uh, Krishna is Bhushana Bhushana. Ornaments, uh, ornaments are beautified by Krishna. We wear earrings so that we look beautiful. But earrings on Krishna, they become beautiful because they are on Krishna. And Krishna beautifies the ornaments because Krishna is Bhushana Bhushana. He is the ornament of the ornament. So then Gokule Brajamanam, Krishna is performing these charming pastimes uh, in, in Gokul Vrindavan and these are the most enchanting pastimes. You know, Krishna has performed pastimes everywhere, many many places like um, you know Mathura, Dwarka, Hastinapur, Kondinapur, Swargulu, Patalu. He has performed pastimes everywhere but especially his pastimes in Vrindavan are most enchanting pastimes. Hmm? Like how you know when Krishna, he steals butter from the gopis and every time he is caught, he makes up an excuse. He is lying. Krishna, who is the absolute truth, he is lying. So one time a gopi caught Krishna and said, and saw Krishna is stealing butter. What are you doing in my house? And Krishna, he makes a very innocent face. And with little tears in his eyes, he says that, Oh, mother, I never thought that you were not my mother. I never thought that this was not my house, that you would catch hold of me and that you will beat me. And he started like, you know, with little tears in his eyes and this gopi got bewildered seeing the innocent face of Krishna and Krishna took the time to run off. <laughs> that was his name. And one time, you know, he, one gopi asked Krishna, what are you doing in my house? And Krishna says, your house? I thought this was my house. Oh, by mistake, I came to your house. I thought it was my house. And the gopi is like, is this what you do in your house? You make a human pyramid and you steal butter. Is this what you do in your house? And Krishna says, oh mother, actually I was, you know, trying to save these butter from the ants. These ants were eating this butter and, you know, I've seen mother Yashoda, she does so much hard work for me to make this butter from morning to evening. I couldn't have her hard work go waste. So I was saving this butter from the ants. So this gopi is like, okay, then why is there butter in your mouth then if you're trying to save this butter from the ants? And Krishna makes up another excuse. He says that, oh, actually there is the friend of the ants, the fly, and it started buzzing around my nose and started tickling me and I felt like sneezing and because my hands had butter, I put my hands like this to cover my mouth and some of the butter went into my mouth and, you know, Thing. If butter went into my mouth, what could I do? I had to eat it. It was not my intention to eat it, but I had to eat it. So like that, he's making all these excuses and he makes excuses. And I know Krishna is feeding the butter to the monkeys and Mother Yashoda asks, oh, who fed the butter to the monkeys and why are you feeding it? And he says that actually the monkeys were eating your butter. I was trying to save the butter from the monkeys and you are, you know, chastising me for that. So like that, you know, Krishna makes... Uh, uh, such enchanting pastimes are there uh, because Krishna is he is advertising to us the charming pastimes that are going on in Goloka Vrindavan. He is making an advertisement. You become attracted to me. You love me. Hmm? Like that. So all these uh, devotees who are able to see the pastimes of Krishna. It's mentioned um, in Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10. Those devotees who are able to play with Krishna, who are able to eat with Krishna, dance with Krishna, they have performed transcendental pious activities for many, many lifetimes to be with Krishna. They have, they have accumulated so much bhakti credits. So we should think that when when would I accumulate so much bhakti credits that I will be able to see the past times of Krishna. Now the mood of the Vrajvasis who are playing with Krishna, who are there, you know, seeing the past tense, but stealing past tense of Krishna, or who are the friends of Krishna who are also engaged in stealing butter with him, their mood is is that they want to please Krishna. They don't want to enjoy Krishna, they want to please Krishna and they are ready to protect Krishna from all the dangers like that. And you know, Mother Yashoda also binds Krishna because, um, you know, Krishna, she says to Krishna, Krishna, you are a Vanar Sakha. And so like Krishna becomes angry, he says, okay, if I'm a Vanar Sakha, I'm the friend of the monkeys and I will go to, go to the forest and live with the monkeys. 
and mother got really scared that Krishna would leave me you know, in order to protect Krishna so that he doesn't engage himself in more naughty activities or gets himself in trouble. Then that's why she binds Krishna to the mortar. So her intention is to protect Krishna. So like that, um, the Brajvasi's mood is that how can I please Krishna? How can I protect Krishna? Krishna is dependent on me. Um, Mother Yashoda feeds Krishna 50 times a day. She thinks that Krishna would die if I don't feed him like that. So, so this is the mood of the Brajvasis and if we have the mood only then we are allowed entrance into the Gulag Vrindavan. How can I please Krishna like that? Um, and then mother is running after Krishna and Krishna becomes caught. Nobody can catch Krishna. He runs faster than the speed of mind. Big, big jnanis and yogis are not able to catch Krishna. We have the past time of Kalyavan, how Kalyavan was, uh, you know, running after Krishna and Krishna was just walking and he couldn't catch up to Krishna. Nobody can catch up to Krishna. He runs at the speed of mind. But only if he allows himself to be caught, then that's when, that's when he is caught. So he is caught by the love of his mother. Uh, so that was the first verse. Move on, move on to the second verse. Rudanta mohur netra yuvam rejantam Karam hoja yuvake nashatata netram Mohur shvatakam patri leva kanta Sita gregam damodaram bhakti bhartam So seeing the whipping stick in his mother's hand he is crying and rubbing his eyes again and again with his two lotus hands. His eyes are filled with fear and the necklace of pearls around his neck, which is marked with three lines like a conch shell, is shaking because of his quick breathing due to crying. To this Supreme Lord, Sri Damodar, whose belly is bound, not with the ropes, but with his mother's pure love, I offer my humble obeisances. So, Rudantam, means Krishna is crying. Muhu means he's crying again and again. Netra Yugmam. With his two eyes, he's Rijantam. He's rubbing his two eyes. Kara Bhoja Yugmina. Kara means hands. With his lotus hands, he's rubbing his lotus eyes. Sha Atanka Netram. His eyes are filled with terror. Muhu, constantly Shwasa. He's breathing very rapidly. Like that. He's breathing very rapidly like how children cry. And he is trembling, Kampa. Three Rekha Kakantha, he has three beautiful lines marked on his neck. And Sthita Gravam, his, his beautiful pearl necklace around his neck is also shaking because of his quick breathing. And Damodaram, uh, Bhakti Bandham. Damodaram, Krishna got this name Damodaram from, Damodar from this pastime. Dam means the rope and Udar means the belly, the one who is tied by the belly. And Bhakti Bhagdha, he is bound by Bhakti, the love of Mother Yashoda. So just to show this quality that I am bound by affection, Krishna, he relinquishes all his uh, opulences of Godhood. Hmm? And he ha is a God, he is a supreme God, he has so many opulences. So like one of the reasons, you know, Damodar Lila uh, was performed so that Krishna could convince Mother Yashoda that he is not the Supreme Lord. Because previous to Damodar Lila, what happened was a Madhmrit Bhakshan Lila, was a you know, Krishna's dirt eating pastime, where Mother Yashoda, she saw the universal form in Krishna's mouth, right? So Krishna, so when Yashoda saw the universe in Krishna's mouth, Yashoda got bewildered and she was like, oh, am I, am I dreaming? Um, is, has Indra casted a spell on me? Why would Indra cast a spell on me? I'm just an ordinary gopi. Is there something wrong with my child? Or maybe Krishna is a supreme lord. She was thinking like that. And she was ready to offer obeisances to Krishna when Krishna got really scared. Now oh, my mother is now thinking that I am God. Then who would chastise me? Who would run after me? Who would make butter for me? Like Krishna got really scared. And he threw his yoga maya on Mother Yashoda. And Mother Yashoda forgot that Krishna is the supreme lord. And she embraced Krishna. So Krishna was thinking that oh, maybe whatever mother saw, the universal form, maybe in her memories it can come back and she might again think that I am the Supreme Lord. So Krishna enacted this pastime of Damodar Lila to convince Mother Yashoda that if you can bind me to the mortar, then for sure I am not the Supreme Lord. Because if the universe resides in my belly and if you are binding my belly, this means you are you know, binding the whole universe to the mortar. How is it possible? I am not the Supreme Lord. So to convince Mother Yashoda, Krishna performed this uh, Damodar Lila. 
So that's one, uh, you know. And there's a Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that, you know, how, uh, there's one verse, it says that um, when um, Krishna smiling face is seen, when devotees see the smiling face of Krishna, and that it evaporates um, the ocean of tears formed in the material world. There's so much suffering in the material world that there has been formed an ocean of tears. And when somebody sees a smiling face of Krishna, at once the ocean of tears evaporates. So we see in this past time the Lord who can evaporate the ocean of tears, He is forming an ocean of tears. The one who can dry up the ocean of tears is shedding an ocean of tears in fear of Mother Yashoda. So that's a Virodha Vas. Contrary nature that Krishna is showing, I'm not the Supreme Lord. He's giving up all his um, opulences of Godhood. Another thing is becoming afraid. It says that, you know, the holy name is feared by fear personified. Aparna samshitam goram yannam vimashogranam granam tatha shuddhayo vimuchate yad bhavesi swayam bhayam. This verse says that, you know, one who is entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can easily be relieved when he even chants the holy name of Krishna unconsciously. Because the holy name of Krishna is feared by fear personified. Everything in the universe, there is a verse in Tattatraya Upanishad, says that everything in the universe is working under the fear of the Lord. The sun is rising in the morning after the fear of the Lord. The wind is blowing. Yamaraj and Indra performing their duties because of fear of the Lord. Fire is acting because of the fear of the Lord. So everything is working under the fear of the Lord. And But here we see that Krishna has become fearful of his of the stick in the mother's hand. So, Bhaya Purusha. Um, Bhaya Purusha, there is so much fear in this world. Everybody is fearful of losing things that they have. So, it says that in enjoyment, when somebody is enjoying, they are fearful of uh, disease. When somebody is wealthy, they are fearful of uh, thieves who can steal their money. When somebody is honored, they are fearful of um, losing their honor, prestige, or being humiliated. And when somebody is beautiful, they are fearful of uh, old age. So like that, there is a there is fear in everyone. And when we combine all the fear of the universe, it forms this Bhaya Purush, who is fear personified. And Krishna, he is feared by fear personified. This entire fear of the universe is fear personified, and Krishna is feared by fear personified. But here we see Krishna is fearful. And he this fear is mentioned as Atanka. Atank. So there is the different degrees of fear. It starts with bhaya, which means you know that that's the first degree of fear. When this fear is exaggerated, becomes the highest degree, it becomes atanka. Like terrorists are called atankavadi. So Krishna, there is so much terror in his eyes. There are other opulences of Godhood that Krishna also relinquishes. Like Krishna is Atma Ram. He is self-satisfied. He doesn't need anything. But we see that in this past time when Mother Yashoda left Krishna unfed, Krishna becomes so dissatisfied. And he becomes so much angry. Krishna is three gunatit. He is above the three modes. But we see that, you know, Krishna becomes angry. That's the mood of passion. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Kaam kro tada lobas tasma retam You give up these three gates of hell. Kaam kro lo. Lust, anger and greed are three gates to hell. You should give them up. But Krishna is showing in this past time, that he is showing calm, growth and loom. He is calming, means he is desiring mother's milk and he is showing anger, growth and loom. He is greedy of more and more butter like that. And Krishna he is the fastest and the faster than the fastest but as we said he is caught by the mother. Krishna is Lakshmi Pati. There are thousands of Lakshmis that are serving Krishna in Vaikuntha. But here we see that Krishna is stealing butter. Hmm. Krishna is Uttam Shloka. He is glorified by the best of the prayers. But here we see that Mother Yashoda, she is scolding Krishna. She is chastising Krishna like that. <coughs> so we can see, you know, Krishna, he is giving up his Godhood. Because he wants to attract everyone by the sweetness in his behavior. So then um, it says, Damodar Bhakti Bandham. Hmm. So, with the bhakti uh, that Yashoda has, she is able to tie Krishna. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam says, Kripyasin Swabandhane. Krishna was bound because he, with his own mercy, he got bound. Hmm? He, he was bound because he allowed himself to be bound. 
And it took a long time for Krishna to be bound from morning to evening. Mother was trying, but Krishna was not getting bound because there were so many energies of Krishna. There were 15 energies of Krishna from on one side and there was one energy of Krishna on the other side. The Kripa Shakti, the Mercy Shakti on, was on one side and there are 15 Shaktis of Krishna. So many Vibhuti Shakti, Aishwarya Shakti, Satya Sankalpa Shakti, all these opulences of Krishna were not willing for their Lord to be bound. So there was a competition that was happening. So it's mentioned how you know uh, Yashoda was determined to bind Krishna. She was making a tireless effort, even though she had so many obstacles. Three prime obstacles that she was facing in binding Krishna. She was receiving failure, she was fatigued, and then she was receiving feedback. So failure, fatigue, and feedback. Failure, she was not able to bind Krishna. Fatigue, she was exhausted. Her whole body was filled with perspiration and sweat drops. And then feedback, she was receiving some criticism from the gopis. They were saying, oh, you can stop you can stop this. You know, you'll not be able to bind Krishna. Today is his lucky day. It's not in his destiny to be bound. So you stop your attempts to bind Krishna. But Yashoda, still she endeavored. She continued to bind, you know, she continued with her attempts to bind Krishna. And when Krishna was pleased with her endeavor, with her determination, when one sweat drop of mother fell on Krishna, Krishna's heart melted. He said, I don't want mother to suffer anymore. Let me be bound. So when Krishna agreed to be bound, then mother was able to bind Krishna. So like that, if we want to please Krishna, uh, we need to put our endeavor. The rope was always two fingers too short. And we say that, you know, one finger represents our endeavor and one finger represents Krishna's mercy. So we should do our endeavor in pleasing Krishna. Anukuliyasa sankalpa pratikuliyasa varjana means we should do everything that Krishna wants us to do, everything that is favorable for bhakti and pratikuliyasa varjana. We should give up anything that is pratikul to bhakti, which is not good for our Krishna consciousness. We already know so many things early in the morning, chanting Hare Krishna Mantra is favorable to Bhakti. Krishna, if you do that, Krishna becomes pleased and you know, eating outside or watching TV or association with the materialists, doing prajalpa, like, these are activities that are um, pratikul to Bhakti, that are not good, that will take us away from Krishna. So, so we should endeavor to do good and even if there are obstacles in our path, you know, somebody is stopping us, criticizing us, or we are receiving failure, we are not getting this taste in bhakti, um, still we should continue on this path of bhakti. So we will continue with the third verse. Iti Vikswanila Viramanda Kunde Svagosham Vimajantam Akrapayantam Tadeshitageshu Bhaktarita by such childhood pastimes as this, he is drowning the inhabitants of Gokul in pools of ecstasy and is revealing to those devotees who are absorbed in knowledge of his supreme majesty and opulence that he is only conquered by devotees whose pure love is imbued with intimacy and is free from all conceptions of awe and reverence. With great love, I again offer my obeisances to Lord Bhagavad hundreds and hundreds of times. Iti Driksva Leela means Leelas like this, uh, Satyavatini is saying. Krishna performs so many different Leelas, you know, Damodar Leela is one of them. Krishna eating dirt, Krishna chastised by mother, Putana coming, Trinavart, Shaktasur, Fruit Vendor. All these pastimes are so many enchanting Leelas of Krishna. And by performing these pastimes, Krishna, he, what is he doing? Svagosham Nimajantam. He is immersing his own community, Rajvasis, in pools of ecstasy, Ananda Kunde. Hmm? Tadi Eshita. Tadiya means any paraphernalia of Krishna is called Tadiya. Agneshu, those who are aware of Krishna's opulence. Hmm? To these people uh, who consider Krishna as the Supreme Lord, Vekunthapati, you know, who are in awe and reverence, he is announcing to these devotees that uh, you know, don't be attached to my awe and reverence, grandeur, majesty. Look at these Vrajvasis. They are not attached to my, you know, grandeur, majesty. <coughs> they are not in awe and reverence. They are attached to my sweetness. They are captivated by my sweetness. And by these devotees, I am controlled. Bhakti, Jitatva. These devotees conquer me. 
पुनः प्रेम दस तम शतावृति बनते तो दैट प्रेम दैट कैप्टिवेट्स कृष्णा सत्यव्रत मुनि सेइंग आई ऑफर माय ओबेसेंसेस अगेन एंड अगेन सो कृष्णा रिलिशेस रसास दैट ही हैज विद द ओबी सो वी हैव फाइव मेन रसास विद दैट वी कैन हैव विद कृष्णा अंतरस दासेरस साखे वात्सल्य मधुराय कृष्णा एंजॉयज हैविंग रसास reciprocation with his devotees when you know somebody considers krishna as small child and chastises krishna or considers krishna as friend or krishna considers krishna as beloved her his um, her husband like that so krishna becomes very pleased with that and krishna says there is one verse in chaitanya charitamrit mora putra mora sakha mora pranapati ei bhave ye more karik shuddh bhakti apan ek bada mane amare samahin sei bhave he amar आमी तमारा, तमारा अहीं, अधीं। so Krishna is saying that if one cherishes pure devotional service to me and and he he thinks of me as 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 his his son, son, friend, or or beloved, and he considers me to be equal or inferior, then I become इफ Krishna says I am the supreme lord they would they wouldn't believe it so when uh, one time Krishna you know he's playing wrestling with his friends and whoever you know who loses in the wrestling game he has to become a horse so Krishna does not like to become a horse so he he's playing with Shridham and he tells Shridham Shridham you know I am the supreme personality of god and Shridham like is in like verse in love <laughs> what are you talking about supreme personality of god it that's the biggest joke ever and then krishna says what didn't you see i was 3 years 3 days old and i killed putna hmm? and uh, you know i lifted govardhan hill in, when i was 7 years old and you guys you went into the mouth of agasura and you almost died and i saved you and you didn't you don't remember you don't see that i am the supreme personality of god i did everything so this uh, shri dam was like what are you talking about what are you talking about putna because mother yashoda she chanted prayers to lord narayan and lord narayan came and protected him and govardhan we supplied so much you know prashad to govardhan he was so pleased that he was just like uh, you know he was swimming in the sky and you just went there and with your hands you lifted you tried you know you showed that you were lifting the govardhan and you were just imitating by right? you were just showing show off krishna you were just showing off and then agasur we had almost already killed agasur when we went men into the mouth of agasur you came last moment and you took the credit and you say <laughs> that you killed agasur come on krishna you not you know, we are we are we are equals tumi kon bada log tumi ami sam they say you're not a big man krishna we are all equals we are friends so like that you know even if krishna wants to show his godhood they would not believe it So Krishna likes that. Krishna likes that uh, he is being chastised by his devotees. Krishna says that when gopis chastises me, they say, oh, "Krishna, you are a liar. You are lumpat. You are a cheater. You are a debauchee." Krishna likes that more than the Vedic hymns that the Brahmanas are chanting. So Krishna likes this uh, loving reciprocation with the devotees. And um, Krishna has come to the material world to show us like how he reciprocates with the devotees, so that we also become attracted and we develop the desire to reciprocate with Krishna, so that we can go home back to God. And you know, Krishna Prabhupada says the goal of life is to play with Krishna, to eat with Krishna, and to dance with Krishna, to have these loving relationships with Krishna. Okay, so we'll move on to the fourth verse now. वरम nor the highest liberation of eternal life in vaikuntha nor any other boon which may be obtained by executing the nine process of bhakti o oh lord i simply wish that this form of yours as bal gopal in vrindavan may ever be manifest in my heart for what is the use to me of any other boon besides this so satyavat muni is saying varam deva moksham na moksham madimba o oh, 
Varak Deva, you can give me all kinds of benedictions, I know that. But let me clarify first, I don't want moksha. He starts with things that I don't want. I don't want moksha. I don't want to go um, a permanent, I don't want a permanent residence in the spiritual world. I don't want liberation. And Anya or any other boon, I don't want. I don't want um, heaven. I don't want car, bungalow, name, fame, prestige. Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim. I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I don't want association of opposite genders. Hmm? Because he knows that all of these things are like, you know, if you go in front of a king, a king who can give you anything and everything in the world, and you go and ask for a pinch of ashes, give me just a pinch of ashes. That's, I mean, all these boons are like that. So he's saying that what I really want is, what I really want is, I want your Baal Gopal form to be ever manifest in my heart. Right? Now Krishna can give us any benedictions. Any, any desire that we have, you know, we should go to Krishna, even if we have material desires. A kam sarva kam vava moksha kam udharadi tivre na bhakti yogina yajati purusham paramati. So we say that, you know, even if we have material desires or we have no material desires or we desire liberation, we should go to Krishna because Krishna is going to evaluate what is best for us and he will only give us that. You know, if a, but Krishna, he would not give us something which would be detrimental to our bhakti. So like there are, you know, other demigods also give boons. They are also vara. They also give vara, like, uh, you know, Brahma gave uh, boons to Hiranagashipu, Hiranayaksha. Shiva gave boons to, you know, Ravana, Vrita, So, But uh, we can see from these past times, all the boons that we got from the demigods, they got from these demigods, which ultimately led to their destruction. But if we go to Krishna and ask for something, you know, Krishna is going to evaluate. And says that you know if somebody Krishna is saying if somebody and he is performing devotional service but he is asking for you know gratification material desires they are like poison and why should I give now if a child comes to the parent and says give me poison would the parent give poison to the child no so Krishna says I am very intelligent so I will not and why should I give this fool this um, his desires for material sense gratification, material prosperity? Instead, I will give him nectar of my shelter of my lotus feet. And he will remain fully satisfied with that shelter. So even Dhruva Maharaj, he had material desires, but he went to Krishna for that. And what happened? He got purified. His material desires got purified. And what did he say to, to Lord when he saw the Lord? Oh, what I was looking for is broken piece of glass. All the material desires I had was like broken piece of glass in front of you. You're so beautiful. You can, you can, you are the one that I wanted. You are like the diamond. In front of you, everything is like broken piece of glass. So like that, you know, we should desire only Krishna and pure for Krishna and service to Krishna. And this Bhai Gopal form of Krishna would appear in our heart when we are totally absorbed in bhakti. When we are engaging all of our senses in Krishna's service, when we close our eyes, when we start chanting, does the form of the Lord appear within our heart? We need that. When, so from Nam come Roop, Gur and Leela. When we chant the Hare Krishna mantra with a proper service attitude, with the attitude of a pure devotional service. I want to become a pure devotee. I don't want any material desires, Krishna. With this attitude, if you chant the Hare Krishna mantra, then from Nam will come Roop. We'll see the form of the Lord. We'll see the qualities of the Lord. We will be able to realize the qualities of the Lord and we will be able to see the pastimes of the Lord manifest within our heart. So that's what uh, Satyavat Muni is praying. Okay, we'll move to the next verse. Idam te mukham bojam matyam tamile Vritam kumpale sritara tasya gopya Mohasyumitam bimbarata bharamne Manasya vilastam alam nakshalabhe O oh Lord, your lotus face which is encircled by the locks of soft black hair tinged with red is being kissed again and again by Mother Yashoda and your lips are reddish like the bimba fruit. May this beautiful vision of your lotus face be ever manifest in my heart. Thousands and thousands of other benedictions are of no use to me. So your mukha is saying is like ambuja, it's like lotus, your lotus like face. Atyanta nile, it's very bluish. Vritam kunthale siddha, his hair are like curly locks of hair. They are like bumblebees. 
So if hair, his face is like the lotus flower, his hair are like the bumblebees surrounding the lotus flower. And Raktis, his face has become reddish. Why Mohus Chumbitam? Because Yashoda has been constantly kissing the Supreme Lord. That's why his face has become red. Bimba Dharakta Bimba Rakta Adharakta. His red lips are like Bimba fruit. Manasi Avirastam. May this beautiful vision of your lotus like face be ever be manifest in my heart. And Alam Lakshana. Millions and millions of other bones are of no use to me. So in two verses, so in the previous verse he says that I want to see your form as Bal Gopal manifest in my heart. Now he is zooming on to the lotus face of Krishna. That's, you know, that's the most, that's the best thing. You know, we say that the Canto Tenor Srimad Bhagavatam is a smiling lotus face of Krishna. It's the most wonderful thing. So, so now, you know, there are so many beautiful things in this world. But all these beautiful things as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita are spark. And they are spark of my splendor. Yad yad vibhuti mat sattvam tad tad evataro. Srimad urjitam evapa tad tad evataro janai mama tejo amsha sambhava. They are but a spark of my splendor. In front of the beauty of Krishna, all the beauty of this world, it fails. So the best meditation that we can have is, you know, you know the beautiful form of Krishna. When we see the deities of Krishna, we should see the deities of Krishna so that we have that impression on our mind that when we close our eyes, we are able to see the beautiful form of Krishna. So Yashoda, he is saying, Satyavrata Muni is saying, Yashoda is kissing your face again and again. He is again, like he said, the earrings are touching your cheeks, they are kissing your cheeks. Mother Yashoda is kissing you. Why am I not able to kiss you? And he has this inner desire, longing of kissing Krishna. That's why, you know. And um, so now, Satyavrata Muni, in the beginning of Damodar Ashtakam, he was in Dasya Bhav. Uh, he was in awe and reverence. But in this uh, verse, he has moved to the Vatsalya Bhav because he wants the Bhav of Mother Yashoda. He wants to kiss Krishna also. So move on to the next verse. Namo Deva Namo Narananta Vishnu Prasita Prabhu Dukha Jalaki Magnam Kripa Vishti Vishya Dhi Nam Vatanu Dhrena Nisha Mama Dhyam Vishya O Supreme Godhead, I offer my obeisances unto you. O Dhamodar, O Ananta, O Vishnu, O Master, O my Lord, be pleased upon me. By showering your glance of mercy upon me, deliver this poor ignorant fool who is immersed in an ocean of worldly sorrows and become visible to my eyes. So Satyavat Muni now is making a daring request to the Lord. You please appear before my eyes. Now earlier he was saying that may your form be manifest in my heart. May I see your beautiful face. And now he's saying, Krishna, I want to see you face to face. And so he's saying that I'm making all these requests so how can all these requests be fulfilled? By Nam Sankirtan. So in this uh, verse, he's speaking different names of Krishna. He's saying, he's reciting the whole different holy names of Krishna. He's saying he's Deva, he's Damodar, he's Ananta, he's Vishnu, he's Prabhu and he's Isha. Hmm? The Yuga Dharma for this age is Hari Nam Sankirtan. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kevalam, Kalau Nasteva, 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 Bhutiranatha. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says the only means of deliverance in this age of Kalu, it's not by karma, it's not by yoga, it's not by jnan, it's only by holy name. Chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra, chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra, chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra, he repeats it three times for emphasis. So now Satyavat Muni is doing Hari Nam Sankirtan. He is speaking different names of Krishna. Each of them have a significance. So he is saying Deva. Deva means you have a divine form. So I want to see your beautiful divine form, O Lord. Damodar. He says the word Damodar because that's showing the quality of Krishna as Bhakta Vatsal. Means he is conquered by the Supreme Lord. He is so affectionate to the Lord. To the, he is conquered by the devotees. He is so much affectionate to his devotees. So that Muni is saying that please be affectionate towards me and show me. Show me yourself. Appear before me. You are very affectionate. You are Bhakta Vatsal. And Ananta. Ananta means unlimited. You are unlimitedly merciful. Who can be more merciful than Krishna? Oho Bhakti Amstan Kalputam. That verse is there where it's mentioned how who can be more merciful than Krishna who gave Putana the 
position of mother even though Putna came to kill Krishna. So like that you are unlimitedly merciful Krishna Ananta. If you are so merciful to please be merciful to me and show yourself to me. And Prabhu, Prabhu means you have inconceivable potencies. You have unlimited potencies and you are very powerful. Although I cannot see you with my senses that I have, nobody can see you with their material senses. You, know, you are adhokshaja. But you can, but if you are pleased with the devotee, you can reveal yourself to the devotee. So like that, you are Prabhu, you have unlimited potencies. You can you can appear before me. And Isha, Isha means you are independent controller, means that you are Swarat. No, you don't follow any rules and regulations. You can make exceptions. So please make an exception for me. Although I'm very unqualified, you make an exception for me and you appear before me. And Vishnu, Vishnu means one who is present everywhere. He is only present. So if you are present everywhere, Krishna, then you can be present before me also. So like that, he is, he is glorifying Krishna through the Nam Sankirtan by saying these five you know, names of Krishna. So he is glorifying the Lord. And then he is presenting his own qualification. So when we uh, when we file an application to someone you know, for a job or something, we will you know first of all we will uh, you know appreciate or glorify the the person, the manager. You know, thank you were so nice to me and thank you so much. Like after the interview, you know we can send an email to the you know the manager who interviewed us. For this application, we first glorify the person. Oh, you are so kind, you are so merciful, like that. He is glorifying Krishna first, and then he is presenting his own qualifications. And what is his qualification? He is saying, he is saying, Dukha Jalabdi Magnam. I am immersed in the ocean of sorrows, he says. And then he says, Ati Dinam. I am most fallen. And Agnam, I am most ignorant. So he is saying that I am. These are my qualifications. Actually, I am disqualified in these three ways. I am most ignorant, I am most fallen, I am drowning in this ocean of sorrows, I am most disqualified in this way. But you please take this as my qualification. And also when you know some beggar is begging for mercy, what does he do? He praises the, the person you know, who can give him money. He would say, oh you are very magnanimous, you look very rich. You are very kind. Just please give me some money. Please give me some money. I'm very hungry. I have not eaten for so many days. So like that, he is begging Krishna. I am very, you know, fallen. I don't have any love for you. You know, I am drowning in this ocean of sorrow because I am so away from you. So like he is begging Krishna. He's, first he is glorifying Krishna and saying his own disqualification. So that's like the inner meaning of this verse. And we see that the longing of Satyavat Muni, his greed is increasing. First he wants to see the form of Krishna manifested in his heart, then he wants to, you know, have Krishna in front of him, face to face. And then in the next verse, he is saying that, let's see, next verse we will recite, Puve Ratma Javadna Murte Yadana Dvaya Muchi Tau Bhakti Bhaja Uprita Ucha Tatha Prema Bhakti Sota Vibraya Cha Namo Shera Ho Mesi Namo Damodar, just as the two sons of Kovera, Mani, Griva, and Nal Kovera were delivered from the curse of Narad and made into great devotees by you in your form as a baby tied with a rope to a wooden grinding mortar. In the same way, please give to me your own Prema Bhakti. I only long for this and I have no desire for any kind of liberation. So here the Lord would say, oh, you are asking so many benedictions for me. What qualifications do you have? Hmm? So then he says that, you know, you gave mercy to those two sons of uh, Kuvera, Nal Kuvera and Mani Griva, although they were so fallen, hmm? they, you know, they were bathing naked in the holy river, they committed offense to the holy river, they committed offense to Narad Muni, they didn't show him respect. Now, if these two people who are so fallen can get your mercy, then, you know, why can't I get your mercy? So, just like, you know, Narodam Das Thakur in one of his songs, he says, Dina Hina Chata Chilo, Hari Nama Udhari Lo, Tara Sakshi Jagai Manai. He says that the holy name has delivered even great sinners. 
Again, he presents examples of other people who got mercy from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says that Jagai Madhai, they were so fallen and they, by chanting of the holy name, they got the mercy. Then I should also get the mercy like that. So in this verse, Satya Muni is presenting a case study of two people who in the past, they have gotten mercy of Krishna. And he's saying, he's also saying that I'm not as much fallen as them, as them so why am I not getting your mercy? My case is stronger. And then, you know, he asking for, in this verse, he's asking for the benediction of Prema Bhakti. Earlier he was saying, Krishna, you appeared before me. And now he's saying, asking for Prema Bhakti because, you know, with Prema Bhakti, Krishna can appear anytime. Whenever the devotee wants, Krishna appears in front of the devotee. He can get repeated darshan of Krishna with Prema Bhakti. So we'll move on to the next verse, last verse. Namaste Sudhamne 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 O Lord Damodar, I first of all offer my obeisances to the brilliantly effulgent rope which binds your belly. I then offer my obeisances to your belly which is the abode of the entire universe. I humbly bow down to your most beloved Srimati Radharani. I offer all obeisances to you, the Supreme Lord, who displays unlimited pastime. So now Satyavit Muni is thinking, I have given a good application by glorifying Krishna, telling about Krishna's qualifications and telling about my own disqualifications. But I have not attached a recommendation letter. Like when we submit application to the universities, we have to attach a recommendation letter, right? Or for applying for the jobs, we have to have a recommendation of someone. So now he's saying that I need a recommendation letter. Who can give me the recommendation letter? Who is the most closest to Krishna? Who is the, who is the top devotee of Krishna? And who is that? Srimati Radharani. If Radharani says um, some to Krishna, Krishna, please accept this devotee. And Radharani says, he is better than me. Prabhupada says, Radharani says, accept this devotee is better than me. Radharani is so humble. So Krishna has to accept the devotee if Radharani is pleased with me. So like that, we, we can also you know, play, pray to Srimati Radharani. This is the month of Srimati Radharani, uh, Kartik month. That you know, please accept us, Srimati Radharani. Accept me as your maid servant. And we can please Srimati Radharani by chanting the holy names of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And um, uh, Satyavat Muni is also paying obeisances to the Ananta Leela. Ananta Leela here refers to the unlimited pastimes of Krishna. Also, the Ananta Leela refers to the Ras Leela pastimes of Krishna. Now, this Ras Lila pastimes is represented by the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has brought the Golokira Prem than Hari Nam Sankirtan. He has brought the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna going on in the spiritual world to the material world in the form of this Hari Nam Sankirtan movement. And we can also participate in Krishna's Ras Lila by, by chanting these Hare Krishna Mantra. So, uh, with that, I will stop here and we can meditate on the meaning as we have discussed while we are chanting the Dhamudha Rashtikam, all these pastimes of Krishna and the meaning and with the bhav and the emotion should come to our heart when we are chanting, then you know, our devotional service would be perfect and Krishna would be very pleased and he will, you know, he will give us prema bhakti, that's the ultimate goal of health. So I'll stop here. So if you have any questions, you can ask. No questions? Okay, let's give a big round of applause to Mataji. Thank you very much. Now let's stand for that, Keetan.